So it took a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but today we're finally back with the Mac Pro and we're finally going to attempt to install macOS Sequoia with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. We're gonna go ahead and start with the guide for OpenCore Legacy Patcher right here. So it looks like the first thing we need to do is download and install OpenCore Legacy Patcher itself, which looks like it's gonna be this thing right here. So we're gonna go ahead and allow that download and it's gonna download right into my downloads folder. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. I'll go ahead and hit continue. This will take up 812 megabytes on your computer, fine. And just like that, we're all done. So now you can see we have it sitting in my launch pad right here. We'll go ahead and open that up and it brings us to the main menu right here. So the first thing that we need to do is build and install OpenCore. Go ahead and install that to disk and you do need a flash drive for this part and I've just got this four terabyte SSD right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the back of the good old Mac Pro right here. And once it, yep, there it is on the desktop. We're gonna go ahead and search for disks again. And we're gonna install it on the uh, Extreme SSD here. So now that we've got that part installed on this SSD right here, it's asking us to reboot. And we're not gonna do that right now because I actually need to create a macOS installer. So we're gonna go ahead and download a uh, installer from OpenCore here. This is the part where I made a mistake last time. Once once this loads up, I'll be able to explain what happened. On the installer menu right here, we've got Monterey, Ventura, Sonoma, and Sequoia. But as you can see right here, the version for Sequoia is 15.7. That version of macOS has not been officially released yet. It's still in beta. I'm not entirely sure why it's showing here, but what we need to do is show older and beta versions. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna select 15.6.1, which is the newest official release of macOS Sequoia. What happened the last time I tried to do this was I did install 15.7 because I really wasn't paying attention and I was like really tired and I wanted it to work and it didn't because I didn't pay close enough attention. And it did actually install, but there were no um, further support options for it, which will make more sense once we get deeper into this. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and download uh, macOS Sequoia 15.6.1. As you can see here, it's 15.7 gigabytes. We'll go ahead and download that says it'll take about four minutes, three minutes, which isn't too terrible at all. So now that we've finished downloading the installer, we now need to create a uh, install disk with it. So we're gonna go ahead and select the installer that we just downloaded, and we're gonna use that same four terabyte SSD as the install disk. And as you can see here, it warns that the drive that you use will be formatted, which is fine, there's nothing on it anyway and then it'll write the installer onto the disk. Now, this SSD is very, very fast, so it's not gonna take too long here, but if you're using something like a, uh, you know, a USB 2.0 flash drive, for example, it, it will take just a little bit longer than this. So now we're finally done creating the macOS installer, and it's asking us if we want to install OpenCore to this disk, which I believe we have already done, but why don't we just do it again just to be safe since it's been formatted. So we'll select our four terabyte drive, we'll go ahead and install that, and just like that, it's all done. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is reboot this Mac Pro and hopefully successfully this time, get macOS Sequoia running on it. So we're rebooting the Mac Pro right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start holding down the option key so we can select which disk to boot from. And there we go. So our first step here is going to be picking the EFI boot option right here. We're gonna do that and we're going to install macOS Sequoia. All right, and it looks like we're in a uh, recovery mode right here, so we're gonna go ahead and click on Install macOS Sequoia. There we go right there. Go ahead and click Continue. All right, we've got our terms and conditions as always. We'll go ahead and hit Agree on that. Just hopefully they don't turn me into a, a human sent iPad over here. Go ahead and hit Agree, and we'll install it on the internal SSD on this Mac Pro. Not sure why it's only showing 56 gigabytes available. I know there's like 100 on it, but we'll cross that bridge a little bit later and it looks like it's gonna take about 20 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and let this do its thing for just a little bit, but once it's done, I'll be back. Quick little iPhone update for you guys right here. We're moving through the update process, but as you can see, it's got a uh, percent completed bar, 
which is uh, just a little bit interesting because I remember this happened last time, but this usually doesn't happen on a normal install of macOS, so I just wanted to point that out really quick. So that install process took about 30 minutes, but check it out, we finally got macOS Sequoia running on this Mac Pro. Now I haven't actually logged in yet, so we're gonna go ahead and do that really quick and get the rest of what needs to be installed for OpenCore Legacy Patcher to get this thing running smoothly. I can already see that we're off to a better start because the screen is actually running at 60 hertz. The last Last time I did this it went down to like either 24 or 30 it looked more like 24 Hertz to me and it was doing some weird like display tearing as well software update complete your Mac has been updated to Mac OS Sequoia future updates will be installed automatically we're just gonna go ahead and download automatically because I, I'm not too big on having software updates just happen on their own and here we go welcome to Mac there we go, and the wallpaper is working this time as well. Okay, so we're off to, like I said, a much better start than we were last time. Let's go ahead and open up a window here, and um, yep, no display tearing. It's running nice and smooth. I'm actually pretty impressed so far. Gonna open up the launch pad. Here's all the apps that were installed with uh, macOS Sequoia that didn't exist on Monterey. But anyway, this little pop-up right here says that uh, we are running the legacy patcher from a USB drive, which is true. Where if, if this is not plugged in, this Mac will not boot. So what we're going to go ahead and do is install the patcher into the uh, internal SSD. And after this is done installing, we will be able to boot into macOS Sequoia without having the uh, the SSD plugged in. Reboot to apply open core has finished installing to disk. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and reboot one more time. And once it shuts down, I'll go ahead and unplug that SSD just to make sure it actually did work. Oh, okay, that is not the screen that we wanna see. So I've, I very clearly did something wrong here. Um, let's go ahead and shut this thing down. Okay, that, that was interesting. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and, okay, might have spoken too soon because now it's working without the SSD plugged in. I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but this is only the second time that I've played with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and the first time I did play with it, it didn't end well. Like, we're making, like, significantly better progress today than I did last time I tried to do this, so this is all still really new to me. But as you can see here, it did successfully boot up without that SSD. Let's go ahead and log back in, and there we go. And something I actually didn't notice, um, the version of Compressor and Final Cut that I installed on macOS Monterey actually aren't supported by macOS Sequoia anymore, so that's kind of funny to see the little uh, the Ghostbusters icon through those two apps. Really quick before we continue, I'm gonna disable this. When you click the desktop, it hides the windows, and I hate that. I, it's ridiculous that that's on by default. I find it to be incredibly annoying, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off. Click to reveal desktop only in Stage Manager. There we go. That's how it should be by default. I don't know why it, why it is the way it is. Now, I'd originally thought that we would have to do this uh, post-install root patch, but right now, everything seems to be working like perfectly, so I'm just gonna not do that for the time being. Uh, what I do want to do though is go ahead and head over to the App Store and um, update Final Cut Pro and Compressor and see if it handles that HEVC footage any better than it did with macOS Monterey. So interestingly enough, um, the updates show nothing. There's nothing in the updates section, but when I go to Final Cut Pro in the App Store, it does give me the option to update it. So we're gonna do that for Final Cut, and we'll do the same thing for Compressor. And if we open up our launch pad, you can see that these two are downloading. Uh, while Final Cut's been installing, I actually took a look at the uh, software updates in uh, system settings, and there's a Pro Video Formats update. So we're gonna go ahead and install that while we wait for Final Cut. And just like that, it should now say that we are fully up to date, and it does. All right, your Mac is up to date. Mac OS Sequoia 15.6.1, that's what we wanted to see. Final Cut finally finished installing, so let's go ahead and actually open it and take a look and see if it handles that R5 footage any better than it did before the uh, Sequoia update. I'm not expecting it to because, again, this doesn't actually have any hardware acceleration for HEVC footage, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe OpenCore works a magic and it's going to support it a little bit better than it used to. The library Mac Pro must be updated. Yep, that's right. We'll go ahead and update the Final Cut library, which shouldn't take too long because there's only one project in it. All right, and here's that Final Cut project that originally the goal was to edit that unboxing video of this Mac Pro on the Mac Pro. I thought that would have been cool, but I didn't end up doing it because it couldn't 
doesn't support the HBC footage from the Canon R5. Now listen, I've read your comments. I know that I could have put a bigger SSD in this or just edited off of a external SSD and converted everything to ProRes, but I didn't do that because that video needed to come out and this is the SSD that I had available to me and I didn't want to spend the time converting everything to ProRes from HEVC, so that's just why I didn't edit that video on this Mac Pro. Moment of truth time, guys. Let's see what she does. So the G85 footage is still fine. Amp okay, that's exactly what I expected. It still doesn't like that HEVC footage. Let's give it a chance, throw it in better performance mode and try it again. Maybe that'll help. Don't have high hopes though. Yep, we're running into that extreme frame drop yet again. Okay, so that's pretty much what I expected. However, what's notable is that it's not worse on Sequoia than it was on Monterey. Another thing we can do is install Creative Cloud apps now, so that's pretty cool. I wasn't able to do that with Monterey because Adobe actually dropped support for macOS Monterey. I, I don't know when, it was a pretty long time ago, but we can install these uh, Adobe apps now. I'm pretty impressed with how well this thing is running right now. It like, there's no feasible reason in my mind that Apple couldn't natively support macOS Sequoia on this thing, but they chose not to. You know, before we end this video though, why don't we try watching YouTube on it? Let's go ahead and watch the last video I did in this thing, and it actually automatically selected 4K. I don't know guys, but that looks like pretty smooth playback to me, and that's happening while we're screen recording. I'm impressed. That's not bad at all. Can't believe I didn't do this right after the uh, the update finished, but there it is right there guys. Mac Pro, late 2013, 6-core. Xeon, AMD Fire Pro D500, and 32 gigs of RAM running Sequoia 15.6.1. That is really, really cool to see. So there you go, guys. That is how to install macOS Sequoia with OpenCore Legacy Patcher on a trash can Mac Pro. So what's next for the Mac Pro? I do have a couple more things I want to do with it, and I will be making videos on those things in the coming months here, but before we get to that, I need to actually start releasing a couple of projects that have been kind of put on the back burner because of the Mac Pro. Honestly, just because of the response that you guys gave me to those videos, I've been prioritizing this because it's been fun. It's been really cool to see how many people share the same interest in these old trash cans as I do. But now that we've got macOS Sequoia successfully running on this thing, I'm going to go ahead and start moving on to a couple of the other projects that I have, you know, on the backlog that need to be uploaded to YouTube. So come back on Friday if you're interested in that, and also let me know in the comments if you want to see me try anything with this Mac Pro. I've seen a few people recommending that I upgrade it to a 12-core Xeon and upgrade the RAM and do a couple other things, and those are things that I am very interested in trying out, so if that's something that you guys want to see, definitely let me know in the comments. But as far as this video goes, we accomplished the goal. We've got macOS Sequoia smoothly running on this 2013 Mac Pro, which is really, really cool to see, because now that this is running a current version of macOS, it's going to be more useful in 2025 than it would have been on Monterey or Mavericks. But until Friday, guys, that is going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, thank you for watching.